everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we're going to learn how to crochet the Drew Mittens. What you can see here in front of you, this is the fourth accessory pattern in the 2024 Wonderful Hats Crochet Along. If you're joining me for that, welcome. There is a matching beanie for these mittens here on my channel and you'll find it under the Wonderful Hats Crochet Along playlist. So these are the Drew Mittens. They are a very cozy pair of mittens. I'll just try and pull back a little bit here so you can see it a little bit better. You are seeing the size medium currently on your screen and that's the size that we are going to work today in our video tutorial. On richtexturescrochet.com or in the description of this video you'll find a direct link to the free written instructions where you will also find the size adjustments for small and large should you wish to change the size of your mittens today. For our tutorial today we're going to be using a worsted weight yarn. This is a uh, one uh, acrylic and wool blend. It's a number four weight. It's the Woolies by Lion Brand. There's 200 yards in this ball. You're going to need about one to one and a half balls of yarn depending on the size that you are making for your mittens today. You're also going to need a five millimeter or an H8 crochet hook. This is the Birchwood hook by Rowan Yarn and there'll be links to these items in the description of this video. So thank you so much for joining me. While you're here, I invite you to subscribe, take a look around, and uh, let's grab our hooks and yarn and get started. Now our mitten today is worked from the cuff all the way up to the top and the cuff of our mitten is worked in rows. So we're going to start by making a slip knot and then by working a foundation chain. Now, if you are working the size medium, you're going to start by chaining 12. Of course, you can adjust the length as desired. Again, we'll be making that size medium today. Uh, an adult medium. If you require to adjust the size, head to richtexturescrochet.com and grab that written pattern. For row one of our cuff, we're going to begin by working a slip stitch into the second chain from our hook and then slip stitch into each stitch all the way across. At the end of this row, you'll have a total of 11 stitches. If you wish, you may also substitute these slip stitches for single crochet or half double crochet. It's up to you. When you come to the end of your row, you're going to chain one and turn your work. Now for row two, your chain one does not count as a stitch and you're going to work a slip stitch working into the back loop only. So looking at the top of your stitch, you have a loop that is closest to you and a loop that is further away. This one that is further away, that's your back loop only. So insert your hook into the back loop only and slip stitch into that first stitch and then into each stitch all the way across. Again, you will continue to have 11 stitches here and throughout. At the end of your row two, chain one and turn your work. You are now going to repeat the row two. So slip stitch in each stitch, working in the back loop only all the way across chain one, turn your work. You're going to repeat your row two until your work from the beginning measures approximately seven inches. And that's laid flat while the fabric is relaxed. It should stretch out quite nicely. So you're going to work uh, until it reaches seven inches. At that time, you can then meet me back here. Once you have worked your seven inches, 
This is what your cuff looks like. You're going to take your two shorter ends and you're going to fold them over so that they meet. You're then going to chain one and you're going to work in the back loop only through both thicknesses and slip stitch all the way across. So back loop only on one side, back loop only on the other side and slip stitch all the way. Make sure that you're working through uh, the same stitches on each side. You don't want to skip any stitches or have it um, buckle together. You want a nice smooth slip stitch seam all the way across. When you come all the way across, you're going to chain one and turn your mitten cuff so that it's right side out. You'll have the seam on the inside. We're now going to work around this rough edge of the cuff and we're going to work the rest of the mitten. Again, we're working in that size medium. For round one, you're going to work 32 half double crochet stitches all the way around. So when I'm working my half double crochet stitches, I'm just inserting my hook where it feels comfortable. And you'll want these 32 stitches to be spread out fairly evenly. All the way around, 32 half double crochet stitches. Once you come all the way around and have 32 stitches, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. Chain one. Now for rounds two and three, you're going to work a half double crochet in the third loop of each stitch all the way around. To find your third loop, looking at the top of your half double crochet, you have a front loop and you have a back loop. If you turn it over, you have a loop that runs just under your back loop. This is your third loop. So we're working in that stitch only, beginning with that same stitch as joining, half double crochet into the third loop, and then half double crochet into the third loop of each stitch all the way around. When you come back to the first stitch, join with a slip stitch into the top, chain one, and repeat for round three. At the end of round three, you'll have worked two rounds of half double crochets in the third loop. So you'll see these nice two ridges of texture running along the top of your fabric. Now for round four, we're going to chain one and we're going to work a front post double crochet in each of the first two stitches. When I'm working in my first stitch, I'm also including that chain one. To work your front post double crochet, you're going to yarn over, bring your hook in front of your work Insert your hook from the front, around back, and out through the front again, around the post of the next stitch. Yarn over and draw up a loop. Yarn over and pull through two loops. Yarn over and pull through two more. You're going to repeat that around the second stitch, around the next stitch. Front post double crochet. You're now going to work a back post double crochet around the post of each of the next two stitches. To work the back post double crochet, yarn over, bring your hook in back of your work and insert your hook from back to front, around the post and out through the back again of that next stitch. Yarn over, drop a loop, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two more. That's your back post double crochet. You're going to do that again around the next stitch. So you've now worked two front post double crochets and two back post double crochets. We're going to repeat that all the way around. 
front post double crochet around the posts of each of the next two stitches and then back post double crochet around the posts of each of the next two stitches. Repeat that all the way around. At the end of your round four, you're joining with a slip stitch into the top of that first stitch. Chain one. Now for round five, we're going to work in a similar way to round four. This time we're starting with two back post double crochet stitches. So back post double crochet around the posts of each of the first two stitches. You're then going to work a front post double crochet around the posts of each of the next two stitches. Repeat that all the way around back post double crochet around the posts of each of the next two stitches and front post double crochet around the posts of each of the next two stitches. Repeat that all the way around. When you come back to your first stitch, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. Now for round six, we're going to chain one, continue working in the same direction, and you're simply going to half double crochet into that same stitch as joining and then half double crochet into each stitch all the way around. When you come to your first stitch, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. Now for rounds 7, 8, 9, and 10, we're simply going to repeat rounds 2, 3, 4, and 5. So your round 2 repeat began with the chain 1 and working in the third loop, your half double crochet stitches all the way around, that was for rounds 2 and 3, and then your front and back post double crochet stitch rounds for rounds 4 and 5. So once again for rounds 7, 8, 9, and 10, you're going to repeat your rounds 2, 3, 4, and 5, and then meet me back here at the end of round 5. At the end of round 10, which is your repeat of round 5. At the end of round 10, this is what your work looks like from the beginning. And you're, you've, you're going to chain one. Now for round 11, we're going to create the thumb hole for our mittens. So what you're going to do is you're going to work a half double crochet in each stitch around until 20 until six stitches remain so we're going to work a half double crochet in each of the first 26 stitches you'll have six stitches remaining I'm at 15 stitches.
20. Band 26. You'll have six stitches remaining. You're then going to chain two and make sure they're fairly loose because you will be working into them later on. And you're going to join with the slip stitch in the top of the first stitch, leaving those remaining six stitches unworked. This is now going to be your thumb hole. Chain one, and for round 12, we're going to work in the third loop, almost all the way around, and you're going to half double crochet in each stitch until you come to your chain two. So working in the third loop, half double crochet in each of the next 26 stitches, all the way around until you come to your chain two. When you come to that chain two loop, you're going to work a half double crochet in each stitch. Now what I did was I worked my half double crochet into the back bump of the stitch because then it meant that that ridge of texture continued. If you're finding the back bump challenging, uh, you can work in any loop because it will kind of be hidden behind the thumb. But I just worked in the back bump, half double crochet in each of those two stitches, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. Now for round 13, we're going to chain one and we're going to pick up our textured pattern, working a half double crochet in the third loop of that same stitches joining, and then half double crochet in the third loop of each stitch all the way around. At the end of round 13, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. For round 14, chain one, work a front post double crochet around the post of each of the first two stitches, followed by a back post double crochet around the post of each of the next two stitches. Repeat that all the way around, front post double crochet around the post of each of the next two stitches, and back post double crochet around the post of each of the next two stitches. When you come all the way around to your first stitch, chain, join with a slip stitch into the top, and chain one. For round 15, we're going to chain one, work a back post, double crochet around the posts of each of the first two stitches, and then work a front post, double crochet around the posts of each of the next two stitches. Repeat that all the way around, back post, double crochet around the posts of each of the next two stitches and front post double crochet around the posts of each of the next two stitches. When you come all the way around, join with the slip stitch into the top of the first stitch. For round 16, you're going to chain one Work a half double crochet into that same stitch as joining, and then half double crochet into each stitch all the way around. When you come to your first stitch, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch.
At the end of round 16, you're joining with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch and chaining one. Now for round 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21, you're going to repeat your rounds 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So repeat beginning with your two rounds of half double crochet stitches in the third loop. Then you're going to work your two rounds of front and back post double crochet stitches. And then you're going to finish off by working a repeat of the half double crochet stitches worked in the tops of your stitches. So go ahead and work through to the end of round 21, repeating rounds two, three, four, five, and six. And then meet me back here so that we can close off the top of our mitten. At the end of round 21, this is what your work looks like from the beginning. This is our thumb hole right here. So if I stick my hands in again, this is the size medium. This is what my mitten is looking like. We're now going to close the top of our mitten before moving on to the thumb. So for round 22, we're going to work in the third loop all the way around. You're going to chain one and work a half double crochet in each of the first three stitches. You're then going to work a half double crochet three together. Again, we're working in the third loop only. So to and that should be a half double crochet two together. To work your half double crochet two together, you're going to yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over and draw up a loop, insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over and draw up a loop. You'll have four loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all four. That's your half double crochet two together. You're going to repeat that all the way around, half double crochet into each of the next three stitches, and half double crochet two stitches together. All the way around until you come to that first stitch. At the end of this round 22, you're going to finish off with a half double crochet in each of the final three stitches, then join with a slip stitch into the top of the first stitch. Chain one for round 23. We're going to work in the third loop again, work a half double crochet into each of the first two stitches, and then half double crochet two stitches together. Repeat that all the way around, half double crochet into each of the next two stitches and half double crochet two stitches together. All the way around until you come back to your first stitch. At the end of round 23, finish off with a half double crochet into the final stitch and join with a slip stitch into the top of the first stitch. Now for round 24, which is the final round of our mitten, you're going to chain one, work a half double crochet in the third loop of that first stitch and half double crochet two stitches together. You're going to repeat that all the way around, working in the third loop, half double crochet into the next stitch, and half double crochet two stitches together. All the way around until you come to that first stitch.
when you come back to that first stitch, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top. You're then going to fasten off, leaving a little bit of a long tail. You're then going to use this long tail to sew the top of your mitten closed. So take a yarn needle and then for this part I like to turn my mitten inside out. And you'll want to lay the mitten so that the thumb hole is coming out the side. Next, you're just going to take that long tail and sew the top closed. I'm just inserting my needle under the top loops in the mitten and working a quick stitch all the way across the top. When you come across, you will then want to secure the tail. And for this, I just put a little knot there on the inside. Next, take your yarn tail, tuck it in so that it's finished off nicely. You can then go ahead and trim any other yarn tails that you may have sticking out once you've woven them in. And turn your mitten so that it is right side out. So this is what our mitten looks like right now. We're now going to go ahead and work our mitten thumb. So with the right side of your work facing you, you'll want to take your yarn and attach it. You can really attach it anywhere you'd like on your mitten. I'm just going to attach it here in the side. When you are working your mitten, you're going to want to make sure that uh, you are working these stitches fairly tight because you don't want any gaps or holes in between where you've joined your uh, mitten thumb to the mitten. Once you have joined your yarn, you're going to chain one and evenly work 10 half double crochet stitches all the way around the thumb opening. So you'll want 10 stitches in total down across the bottom. You do have some nice stitches to work into. If you wish to work more or less, you are certainly welcome to. How many do I have here? Because there is a little bit of a gap, I am going to just work one more stitch here. For my original, I did work 10. You're then going to join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. Chain one. We're now going to continue working in rounds all the way around and it's up to you. You can either join at the end of each round, chain one and continue, or you can work continuous rounds where you simply mark the first stitch with a slip stitch or with a stitch marker and continue on. But what you want to do for the thumb is for rounds two, three, four, five, and six, working in the third loop only you're going to half double crochet into each stitch all the way around. You want to have a total of six rounds of half double crochet stitches worked in your third loop.
So when you come around, you can either join and chain one. I'm just going to continue working here in the third loop, pulling this next stitch a little bit tighter. So work a total of six rounds of half double crochet stitches. Once you've worked through to the end of round six, you're going to take, cut your yarn, leaving a long tail. Again, if you needed to work more rounds, you could as well. Fasten off, leaving that long tail. Once again, you're going to turn your mitten, at least the mitten thumb, inside out and thread your yarn through your yarn needle. You're then going to use that long tail to sew the top of your thumb closed. To sew the top of my thumb closed, I just wove in and out through the tops of my stitches around that last round of half double crochet stitches. So I'm just weaving my needle in and out through these top stitches all the way around until you come back to that first stitch. When you come back to the first stitch, simply pull the top closed and secure your yarn. You'll want to then weave in your ends. Fasten off any yarn tails and turn your mitten thumb once again right side out. And that's all there is to working the Drew mitten. So thank you so much for joining me. You'll go ahead and repeat those steps for the second mitten. Again, if you're looking for the extra sizes, head over to richtexturescrochet.com and you'll find the stitch counts for the size adjustments there. It's linked directly in the description of this video. So thank you so much for joining me once again. Don't forget to subscribe if you happen to make a pair of the Drew Mittens and share it on social media. Do be sure to tag Rich Textures Crochet. I always love to come by and admire your work. Until I see you next time, happy crocheting. Bye!